remember, the Hoover Junior 119 that we got given along with the Hoover Senior 612 a couple of months ago. Put that to one side. We have some parts to fit, a few jobs still to do, but this machine is ready to go back together, be tested and see how well it's come up after a full refurb and quite a bit of work. Let's have a look. Hello, my vacuum cleaner and hoover chums. How are you today? Yeah, we've got six more screws to put back in. Obviously, here is the bag. This hasn't been touched since the episode where we top fill converted it. So in here, look, is still the Hoover Turbo Power One bag fill tube all ready to go back on there. What we need to concentrate on first is here. And yeah, it's all been very nicely cleaned and mechanically restored. I haven't painted it. It was on the edge. This isn't the right shade of gold, but it is an shade of gold and it looks all right. So it still has its white handle grip. You be good luck finding a brown one. If you do, send me a link and I'll bet it'd be gone by the time we look at it. It also has, because obviously the one that it came with was very destroyed again. I haven't managed to find another one of these. So it has an Osprey one, just like the good old days. It still carries its grey cable. Again, it's an original Hoover cable, but grey, sadly. And then, yeah, everything here has just been stripped, washed, polished. I mean, in there is just brand new. It, it came up really really well the handle reclines and springs back up beautifully the switch works in fact the motor works which i could probably show you it running now let me wind the cable down and then get it very much out of the way Part. What we need to concentrate on really is putting these two parts together. And well, the only reason I haven't done that so far is because this is the old seal that goes around here and seals this to that. And usually I would just flip these around and replace them. But on eBay, as we speak, oh, this is the wrong flipping one. You can buy these gaskets, new old stock. Somebody else did their own Barton strip and got a load. Not this one there. Maybe it is that one on the listing. I bought two of, I think these might actually be the 612 ones. And this one is the one one. I don't know. There's only going to be one way to find out. And that's to open them up. These are, you know, 50, 60 years, probably. I mean... I think it is that one purely because it looks like it fits and yeah that's a nice squishy rubber so what we need to do oh this is going to be difficult can we lay you on there yeah there we go just push it into place and oh yeah that's going in very nicely indeed and yeah normally you can usually clean and reuse the old gasket but Whilst there's new old stock parts to be had, I'm going to have them. I'm going to carry on doing this off camera because this was trying to twist all back into the position. I guess it was supposed to have been fitted, I don't know, several decades ago. Oh, I'm going to have to cut it though because it's got a little bit, a little bit long in that corner. But we can trim that out and then we can look at what I've done to this bit here. Now under here, a lot has happened. If we lift up these two bits here which never used to work before as you remember and then oh, we do have to push the brush roll out because there is no belt yeah i have replaced this entire part here and I basically screwed it on if you look in there now there's some nuts and bolts which work very well indeed and at the front you can see how the nice brown 119 bumper has fitted on obviously i had a gray bumper on it before i had a scrap machine so this bottom bit 
and this bumper is from that. We can take our belt, put it on our brush roll, and we have the same brushes, they were fine. We have the same bearings, which cleaned up well. So, hopefully, if I've done this the right way around, we can pop this into there, pop that down to there, and then bring these two together and do up the motor to brush roll screws. Then we can fit the belt and maybe check that the brush roll spins nicely. With the machine now together and well, certainly feeling a lot more like a vacuum cleaner, we can take our belt and well, let's try remember how to do it. But of course, I don't need to try. There is a guide and that is wrong. That I think will be the right way. Should we test it? Should we plug it back in and see if I've made a terrible mistake somewhere and it sounds awful? I think that belt's going to be fine. Now, of course, we could fit this perfectly good, perfectly functional belt cover back on, but, I mean, look at the writing on it. It is pretty terrible. However, from the same seller who got me the gasket, I found this much more better belt cover for a tenner. And I think it's, it's the same era, the late King George, so, yeah, that will do. And, well, I think that just makes it look a lot nicer to have you know an actually good and decent ow slapped myself in the knee good and decent belt cover on it so all that remains for us to do is at least just unplug it or at least turn the socket off because underneath here oh well, this is going to be very difficult for me to show you now there we go no, there we don't go under there still needs the bottom cover putting back on which i have glued together and it seems okay. So I'm going to pop this into place if I can with all the wiring that is now a lot more fresh, shall we say. And then we can fit the bag and do some vacuuming. Much better indeed. I've also popped a different bag top on as well because obviously the other one had a really stretched old spring, which I'll probably keep the old bag top that the spring can go. But I had a better spring and a better bag top. And now the bag sits perfectly. You would hardly know it had a paper bag in it. Hopefully it should inflate. I'll turn the power on. Oh yeah. Well, that works absolutely perfectly, like brand new. And of course, it has big gaping holes in this bag. Aren't too much of a problem. There is one problem that I'm having with it, though. I don't think the front is pushing down as much as it should. And this back part had a load of random shims in it as well. And I think I've got some spare shims. I think we just want to bring this out just a little bit so that it pushes the front end down. Let's see if I've got any of those. Here we go. Here is my spares 119. I'm still not entirely convinced things aren't going to crawl out of it. And I think it's now it's in. It's time to finish stripping it for spares. Look, the switch is pretty interesting. The back is completely smashed off. Although the coil's probably fine. It's got this part never really breaks. The centre bar, that's good. The handle bail, that's good. There'll be lots of screws. It's got its bottom piece, which... 
would probably clean up okay. But all we're interested in now is this. And again, once I've taken these random junior wheels off, this back axle should be perfectly good. But we want some of these. These are the shims that shim up. A junior height adjustment. You know, you don't do it automatically. You have to take a screwdriver like a complete alien, undo it all. And I mean, this has a lot of shims. What it's also got is some bits of cardboard, which were in it when we arrived. So I don't quite know how much to put in. I mean, that's three big shims. One medium is like, yeah, two small ones. Let's put all but the other thick one in. That's got to raise it a fair bit. We've, we've got to be a little bit careful that we don't, you know, plow it into it too far. But, oh, get that monstrosity up there. This might make it a little bit fruitier. Let's see if it has, oh, or if it made it worse. That's better. That is this rug not playing fair. And of course, we can open the bag and behold, it is. Let's just unclip it so you can see. It is spotless inside because we have our paper bag, which has stayed fitted. Oh, you can't see anything. We're away from the lights here, which has stayed fitted very well. I'm not going to get it all out now because, I mean, it's not a faff, but it's not something you want to be doing all of the time and yeah it's it's doing well if i come down to the bottom yeah there's a there's a fair bit of dust in there somewhere this isn't that filthy look you can see our little pipe doing its job there i think i'm very happy with that that works well nice machine i'd say saved it worked anyway it's sort of a bit better now but yeah all done and from sort of this angle ish if you close your eyes a bit and look the other way it looks pretty reasonable it's not bad and mechanically it runs so well Runs really well. It's what you can have as a usable daily or find them brown paint and do the handles and the bail. And the gold hammerite works well on the hood. You could make this thing look really nice. And then, of course, find a brown cable, find a brown middle cord hook. And yeah, she'd be decent. She'd be all right. I mean, I, I say all this because this is probably going to go on to eBay soon. So, yeah, we can, I can reference this video in the ebay listing but yeah it's good we have saved the machine oh my goodness the cable barely doesn't fit around the top cord hook that's that's very annoying i can't crisscross the cable how do you wind your cable up do you crisscross it or do you do it straight we're going to have to do it straight now because then i think the plug will fit oh fair enough so Thank you very much, Ruth, for sending me this and the 612. I still have the 612. That's why I bought gaskets for both of them while they're available on eBay. So, yeah, we shall see that soon. But because this one just needed, you know, I say there's a 612, but I was in a 119 mood. Little simple things. And I could do things like pop the original bumper back on, give it a nice new belt cover. And, yeah, it's ready to be used once more. So, what do you think of the Hoover Junior 119? Do let me know in the comments down below. But until the next exciting Hoover video, I 
maybe this, maybe not this. I don't know. Depends if I've still got it when we do the 612. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.